Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dot Com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Show. Today's guest, I've been trying to get on for many, many months, but he's so busy, I haven't been able to book him until today. Wait till you hear what Kyle Jones is doing at iCryo. Uh, this is just one of the most amazing businesses that we've covered in a long time. And Kyle, I'm very delighted to have you on the show today. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to be here, and and you are uh, you are not short of being uh, being absolutely serious when you say I've been very busy. <laughs> That's for sure. So at a very high level, what we like to do is pull the lens back, and I know a lot of people have heard of iCryo. I know a lot of people are visiting your your iCryo establishments already uh, because you're expanding so quickly. But for those people that don't know much about iCryo, let's get a little uh, thirty second sort of elevator pitch and tell them what you do over there. So I cry, we, you know, we're centered around total wellness. Um, all of our services are there to either boost the immune system, reduce inflammation, um, anything that's going to kind of accelerate that quality of life. Um, we, we just love everything that enhances who you are as a person um, from the inside out. And so for me, we pay attention to a lot of modalities in the recovery and wellness space that focus on just elevating the lifestyle of your everyday life. That's awesome. Now, Kyle, obviously, uh, you know, a lot of what you do has come to the forefront uh, because many, you know, athletes come to iCryo and many of the athletic establishments and pro teams use things that you have at iCryo. But now this is becoming mainstream. So many people want this therapeutic effect that the eye cryo opportunity can provide them. Tell us some of the things that you have in an eye cryo that people can sort of take advantage of your modalities, if you will. Yes, yeah, so we operate with a seven core service business model. Um, first off, you obviously have the whole body cryotherapy, which is most commonly known right now in the United States. Um, it's very athlete driven from an outsider's perspective. Um, but realistically, it's the common, uh, you know, middle-aged person. It's the common housewife or, or dad or just the average Joe and Jane Smith, right, that come in and, and they're our regular users. Uh, we also have the cryofacial that we do, which is just a huge hit, not just for women but for men as well. Uh, great for headaches, migraines. Uh, we can actually localize specific areas on the body to spot treat an ankle or a knee. Um, and then we have our infrared sauna technology, uh, we do red light therapy, chromotherapy, um, which infrared technology is just being blasted all over the place in a positive way uh, by the medical community. I think last year in 2019, there were over 5,000 clinical studies done on infrared technology alone. Um, so we, we kind of, uh, we harp on infrared a ton. We do body sculpting techniques, slimming, toning, spatials. Uh, we do IV infusions, vitamin shots, which are becoming a big hit. Um, especially during that COVID era uh, where we had the quarantine, people were looking to get direct supplementation to the bloodstream. Uh, the IVs have just become a huge hit for us. Um, and then moving, moving more towards the realm of just basic recovery, we offer compression therapy um, and things of those sorts. So when I talk about a lot of these things, um, you know, a lot of what we do is preventative care, uh, wellness-based care, and then post whatever that issue may be, recovery type care. Well, that's amazing. And I have one of my best friends that uh, gets the, um, the, uh, the, the vitamin therapy. And I'm telling you, I hear it from him every day how good he feels. So that's maybe how, how you look so good and feel so good. And that's a big hit, right? Yeah, the IV infusion space, it's, it's very new. Uh, cryo and IV hit the stage relatively the same time back in 2010. So within this first decade, um, but most IV companies are just doing hydration type things. And to be honest, we have a menu of infusions that are geared towards many different things. Um, we like to call it purposeful product development. We're, we're building IV infusions for a specific purpose, not just for hydration, right? We are going to get those nutrients and minerals direct to the bloodstream. So there is a hydration component to it, but we have IVs for beauty. We have IVs for weight loss. We have IVs for uh, recovery performance from working out and, and reducing inflammation. We have IVs that just provide an array of benefits, but we like to cater it to a specific, uh, specific purpose. That's awesome. And obviously, what you're doing at iCryo has been such a huge hit. 
Uh, you're based out of Texas, but this expansion that you've started to experience where people are calling you and saying, Kyle, you know, I have to open an eye cryo in my city because it's phenomenal. You know, you've got a number of cities open right now. Um, people watching this, let's talk a little bit about this because there's going to be a lot of people watching that are going to say to themselves, you know, I don't have one of these in my city. Maybe I want to uh, open up one uh, in my city or get a region or get an area protected. How does all that work with your iCryo sort of franchising model? So we actually locked down our franchising model in 2017. Uh, we decided to start franchising. Uh, 2018 was a year of just getting the brand word out there. Uh, 2019 was probably the biggest year in company history for us. We sold upwards of 70 locations. Uh, we launched about 15 different states across the country. Um, and so it was an explosive year for us. The brand was getting recognized in more ways than we could even fathom. Uh, we were partnering up with professional football players, celebrities. Um, people were just endorsing I Cry the brand specifically, um, left and right. And so it had just a lot of positive energy behind us. The PR got really nuts. Um, it, it was just an opportunity. I tell people when you're looking at business, number one, are you helping yourself, right? From a financial perspective, is it, is it making you money? And number two, are you helping other people? Um, and, and to me, that those two have to go in line for you to have a, a, a very satisfying business model, franchise model, um, that's long-term, right? And some people look at a short-term exit, two years, three years, and I sell it off. It's because they're not doing the second thing, right? They're making them happy. They're not making other people happy, right? And, and so I think it's very important that when people look at our model, um, we're bettering people's lives. We're making people feel better. Uh, we're making people feel more confident about themselves, the way they feel inside, the way they look outside. And so um, for me uh, and anybody in our corporate office tell you the same thing, it's exciting to get to work every day because we're helping people be a better them, right? Be a better you. And so uh, when, I, when I tell people about the franchise opportunity, yes, we make great money. It's a lucrative business. The franchise model is very successful. But think about the people that you're helping. Think about the people that are walking inside your center with a bum knee or maybe it's a grandparent that's never been able to get rid of a back pain or whatever it may be and helping that person get back to where they were in a comfortable place, right? See, that's really amazing. A lot of entrepreneurs are going to take what you're saying to heart. So a lot of businesses, they start off looking sort of about themselves first, what it can do for me. Yep. But what they really forget is the way a business gets built is you have to be able to provide something for the other person that's going to be very valuable. So when you go into work with an iCryo franchise and you're walking in to open, unlock that door for the day and you've got your appointments booked up and you've got people coming in, you know that they're leaving being helped. And that really is a true win-win um, for, the, for the franchise owner, right? Is that the way it works? That's right, man. It's, it's, it, my passion for helping others is how this company got started in the first place. And I was originally pursuing my doctorate in physical therapy because I just love, I love the body. I love the way that it operates. I love, I love that, the, the way the body operates when you do the right things for it, right? And so for me, that's, that's huge. Just being preventative, be aware of your immune system, being aware of your physical, um, your physical health as well as your mental health, right? Both are very important. Uh, a lot of physical rehab, uh, documentation shows is up here, right? It's, it's, a, it's a mental game. Um, and so for us, doing all the therapeutic modalities that we offer within iCryo, there's not just a physical benefit, but there's also a mental benefit to that. Um, having this up here in the right place can do everything for this in here. And so uh, for me, the, the passion resides in the culture of iCryo. And when you walk into an iCryo location, I've had many, many, many of our guests say it. They feel like it's a second home. And that's the way that I love it. See, I love that. And as a, as a person that sort of buys a franchise or, or runs a city or has a state or a region, when they get to speak with you and other iCryo owners, you know, franchise owners, it must be wonderful to be around so many positive people because it sort of it energizes everybody and it sort of um, becomes this big family as, as being part of your franchise program, right? Yeah, and I think that's honestly what separates us, not just from our direct competition, but from other opportunities in business in general. Um, I'm very big on two things, positivity and energy. 
Um, there was a study that was produced a few years back uh, that people can actually feel or sense your energy from over 20 feet away. So I always explain to people, when somebody walks in that front door of an eye cryo, they should be electrified inside. They should feel that positive energy, uh, that passion that we have for the brand, um, and immediately feel like a different person. And uh, for us, yeah, you, you you know, when you speak to an owner of one of, uh, one of our locations, speak to a franchisee, even some of the part-time employees. I mean, this is something where we've actually had people in our company uh, at the very beginning, they took significant pay cuts to be with us because they loved what they were doing, right? They wanted to build this brand and grow it like it should. And so, uh, to be honest, I think that's that's one one thing that I do when when we get a prospect and somebody's asking, hey, I'd like to start an iCryo franchise, I wanna learn more about it, I direct them immediately to a franchisee. I say, hey, look, I don't wanna be the sales guy, I want you to go to speak to some of our owners and they will share the light of what their experience has been. See, that's wonderful and that really shows them what you're doing because as well as so many people want to open the iCryo franchises, you're very selective. You don't want a, 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 a sort of a person who's a drag or doesn't have a positive attitude or somebody that doesn't have that winner's type of mindset. So you get to select these people uh, being in the enviable position to even surround yourselves, your, your team with the franchisees that are very positive and, and willing to learn and, and willing, willing to get up in the morning and do these positive things for your clients. So that's, that shows very well in your franchise business. Yeah, and that's right. I mean, for me, when we accept a franchisee and, and we vote somebody in, um, uh, the board of directors vote somebody to be approved. I mean, to me, you're, you're, you're welcomed into the iCrowd family. I'm opening my arms for you and bringing you into to my inner circle. And so, yeah, we're, we're very selective when it comes to picking franchisees and who best qualifies, right? Obviously, the monetary thing comes first. Do you have, do you have the money to do it? Do you have the assets? Do you have the credit? Um, but past that, when we, get, when we get past that initial vetting process, um, we bring them in here for Discovery Day to Houston, Texas. We meet in person. Um, I'm pretty old school when it comes to thing. I like to press the flesh, uh, handshake with somebody, give them a hug. Uh, I'm all about that Southern hospitality. Obviously, in COVID times, we're not hugging each other right now, but um, as, as close as we can get to, to get some type of a relationship going, uh, because I like to do business. I like to do life with people uh, that not only I know and trust, but honestly, that I love. And um, people that share the same core values of, of having the passion and inside their core for helping others. Uh, for me, that's what iCryo is all about. That's the platform that we sit our brand on. And those are the types of people that I want represented in the company. See, that's wonderful. Potential franchisees that are watching this, they're obviously going to feel this energy. And in this day and age, to find sort of a leader with the type of passion that you have at the corporate office is very hard to find. I want to continue to peel back uh, the, the model that you've been able to build. But let's just take a step back just for a second. Someone's watching this who, who just has some aches and pains or somebody that's gotten a little older like me that has a little arthritis when I wake up in the morning and I have an eye cryo in my, in, in my city if I'm lucky enough to have one there. And if I don't have one here now, I'm sure very soon I will. Tell us a little bit sort of about the demographic profile of the types of people that come into iCryo. It obviously started with the athletic performance and athletes and people that are, are uh, sort of professionals in their, in their athletic ability, but now it's gone mainstream. So tell us about the kind of people that come into an iCryo establishment. Yeah, you know, it's, it, when I look at the analytics and I see who our, uh, who our typical buyer is, um, it's, a, it's a very wide range, a very wide range. Um, we've had kids come in as, as young as seven or eight years old that, you know, with spot treat a certain area. You talk about gymnasts, cheerleaders. Uh, kids are starting athletics at four years old nowadays. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, my parents put me into Pee Wee sports at five, six years old. Um, so these kids have, have tons of stress on their body at a young age. Um, they need the same form of recovery, just at a, a minimal level as we do with adults. And so then you talk about the opposite side of the spectrum, elderly people in their 80s, 90s, um, they're dealing with a ton of physical and mental related issues. So the things that we can help uh, on, on these people's daily lives is, is literally, and I don't use this term often, it's a life changer. 
Um, literally, you're changing their lives for the better. And so for us, obviously, our sweet spot is within that 30 to 50, 55 year old range. Um, that that's kind of like 80% of our buyer and our customer. Um, but when you look at it from a broad spectrum, I always tell people it's if you're a living, breathing person, you can benefit off of our services. Um, period. There, there's there's no requirement on ethnicity or or sex or age or height or weight or any of that. Um, none of that plays a factor into how we can help a person that's out there walking around that has any type of a mental or physical related problem. Um, back in 2010. Cryo first came into the United States uh, from overseas, and the first real big organization and, and people to really get a hold of it, um, they were celebrities. You had Nike, you had LeBron James, you had Floyd Mayweather, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, your elite athletes that, that spoke to the athletic community, they were using these Olympic athletes, they were using this technology to recover faster than, than their competitors and get back to 100% faster. Um, so the, the athletics took off like crazy. But what people don't know is cryotherapy was originated back in the 70s in Japan to treat rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia. Um, it then made its way to Poland and, and the cities or the uh, countries in, in Europe. Um, it was used as a actual physical therapy modality. So it was a part of the treatment protocol, a part of uh, the treatment plan. Um, you can actually get a four-year bachelor's degree undergrad in some countries overseas in cryotherapy. So they look at it more medical. Uh, we look at it more wellness. Um, but it is, it's just a, a phenomenal session of, of therapy. I don't know of any other therapy in the world that's three minutes or less, and you can get the array of benefits that cryotherapy provides. See, that's unbelievable. And, and there's an old saying that to follow the money. And if we look at where it started with the professional athletes, the Ronaldos of the world and the LeBron James, they're using this therapy because they've got a financial incentive to keep their bodies at the top level that they can. And their sponsors want them to keep their bodies at the top level that they can. So, so when they go into a modality like this or a technology like this, it's because of the fact that they're trying to keep their body in the best possible condition so that they can keep the, their, their owners happy, they can keep the NBA owners happy and the soccer owners happy, as well as all their endorsement companies mm -hmm. happy. So this tells you how important the therapy is. And that, if that doesn't tell you how great the therapy is and that it works, nothing else will. And of course, with iCryo as well, there are literally, not that you've done, but there are thousands and thousands of research studies out there that talk about the powerfulness of these modalities. So people watching this obviously are going to try and get some of these therapies. And I remember many years ago getting the, the infrared therapy that you had mentioned, and you had to go to a doctor's office to get that. So how, does that, how has that all changed uh, now with your, with your program? Yeah, with infrared technology, it's becoming a lot more mainstream as well. Uh, it's hitting the West Coast very hard right now. There's a lot of uh, infrared sauna, just standalone businesses on the West Coast that are just flourishing. Um, I encourage people that are viewing to look up infrared sauna technology. There's three different forms of rays. You had near infrared, mid infrared, and far infrared, which they're basically just different uh, penetrating wavelengths inside the body. Um, most people, when they think of a sauna, they think of your normal gym sauna where you just sweat and sweat and sweat and sweat. Um, well, it's a little bit different. From an infrared perspective, uh, we're actually penetrating the wavelengths inside the body, and you're heating the body from the inside out, rather than a regular sauna where you're heating the ambient air around you and heating the body from the outside in, right? So when you enter infrared sauna, you're not there to really sweat. Um, you're there to receive the benefits of the infrared technology. What a lot of sauna companies have done, they've introduced chromotherapy uh, and red light therapy. So when you have your chromotherapy, there are different light settings that are good for different things. Some are good for purifying the skin. Some are good for reducing inflammation. Some are there for mental benefits. Um, so it, it's a lot bigger than what people may imagine. Um, me personally, the infrared sauna is something I do on a weekly basis. Uh, you start to look at the research that's backing it. Um, it, it, you can't deny what's being said. Um, red light, another thing. Red light therapy is just something that is taking off right now. 
Uh, they have red light panels that you can use. They have small devices where you can do red light to a specific area. Um, and then they actually have red light beds where it looks like a tanning bed. Um, and you can engulf your entire body. And so it's just, it's phenomenal to see these wellness services um, just taking flight like they should have years ago and getting the recognition that they deserve. Well, listen, I'm sold. I mean, I'm going to call you after the interview and talk about opening up a franchise. But let's talk about franchising just for a minute. So if I, if I want to open a franchise, obviously I have to contact you to see if the state or region is open. But if I'm getting my mind around it a little bit, how many square feet of a, an establishment is, the, is sort of the, the, um, the prime amount of square feet to open up an iCryo uh, franchise? We usually look between about 2,500 and 3,500 square feet is kind of our normal footprint. Uh, we've gone below that in certain situations. We've gone above that in certain situations. Uh, it really depends on how elaborate we're getting. Uh, what, what demographic are we pursuing? You know, is it, is it South Beach, Miami? Is it Los Angeles? Is it Manhattan? Is it a small suburb around San Antonio or Oklahoma City? Um, you know, what, what does that demographic look like? Um, how many of each modality should we place, right? What does the traffic count look like it's going to be? Um, and we do that purposeful so that way we can attend to our guests in a proper way. Um, I think the one thing that I, I irritates me the most, and I'm guilty of it, uh, is I'm a very impatient person. <laughs> and so I know when I walk into a business myself, um, I don't like to wait very long, right? I like to be attended to. I'm there to spend my hard working dollars on a service that hopefully is going to make me feel better or that I enjoy. Um, so I take that same train of thought when we open up an iCrowd location, how many people are we expecting to come into this business? That way we have the appropriate amount of staff and we have the appropriate amount of uh, modalities to service the community. So I would imagine that most of the franchisees that open up a franchise with you, they're working it every day. They're going in, they're hands-on, they're sort of um, people that are not just opening a franchise and inserting employees in, they're probably working it as well. If I want to open up an iCryo in my first store, how many additional employees do you think I would need to sort of have to kind of cover the amount of foot traffic that I'm going to be getting from everybody wanting to get this therapy? And that's one thing, you nailed it on the head. Um, we, we like owner operators. Um, I, I, I really don't like bringing on owners who are distant, who don't want anything to do with the business. To me, that shows the lack of passion they have for it. Um, we like owner operators outside the owner, usually have a manager, an assistant manager, and then maybe four to eight full-time slash part-time employees. Um, and you gotta understand with IV infusions, you just can't hire a lay person, right? You have to hire somebody that's of a registered nurse, a paramedic with some extra licensing of some sort. Um, so they have to have medical cr uh, credentials in order to do that. So our staff is really split. Uh, we hire some people that are just uh, sales specialists. Um, and then we have some people that are on the medical side that do the IV infusion and vitamin shots. That's awesome. So there is a little bit of a specialty with the IV drips. You will have to hire somebody with some special licensing and that makes sense to keep everybody safe, right? Right. Yeah. We operate under a medical directorship. Um, and so with our chief medical officer, it, it's very important to stick to the standards, the protocols, um, and legalities of every state is different, right? Um, we don't operate the same in Texas as they do in Florida or as they do in uh, Nevada or wherever, whatever state we're launching. Uh, we have to make sure that we're always operating at the highest level possible uh, so that way we don't ever get nicked on by the, by the medical board. That's, that's awesome. And what I recommend for people watching this that are considering calling Kyle about the iCryo opportunity, you know, talk to Kyle, talk to his team, because obviously what you're asking yourself right now is how much does a franchi franchise cost? What type, what type of gross and net margins are available to me as a franchise owner? How fast can I uh, grab up as much real estate as I can to cover and protect my flanks so that I can have an entire region. And all these questions can easily be answered uh, by calling Kyle. And if Kyle doesn't answer them directly, he's got a wonderful team over at iCryo that will answer all the questions that you have. And from what we know about iCryo, the people that call him and get involved with these franchises, they're very, very happy and excited that they've made the call and that they've been able to learn about this wonderful technology. And I would imagine that the iCryo, the I 
Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to presume I know. What does the I stand for? <laughs> so I get, I was waiting for you to ask that question. I, I always get asked, how did the name come about? Yeah. Um, two, two, two things that popped into my head when the name came about. Um, I, I wanted the name to be, to be, I'm very big on branding. Uh, if you haven't noticed yet. Um, so I wanted the, I wanted the name to almost be a, like a, like a stamp, like a brand, like you're branding something. Um, and so in my mind, I was thinking something with some type of a border around it. Uh, I was racking my brain, writing names. And for me, it's all about the individual. It's all about them, right? It's all about you. It's all about I. Um, and so I, I can never forget, you'll never believe this story, but I remember coming home one day years ago. Um, it was back in 2014, maybe. Uh, and, uh, I had a probably 20, 30 names written down on this, on this pad and, I sat down. I was exhausted from the day. I was actually in PT school at the time. I popped open the TV and turned it on, and that movie I Robot with Will Smith came on. <laughs> and I said, "I cryo." I mean, it just it just clicked. I already had the border sketched out. I had the the I in there for the for the guest for the customer. And that movie I Robot came on. It just it spoke a few things to me. It spoke to me about the future of this industry. It spoke to me about simplistic, uh, just being very simplistic with the name. Uh, don't rattle off something crazy that, that people can't understand and just get to the point. Um, so for us, I knew it encompassed everything about the brand that, that we knew moving forward. See, I love it. And it does look like a stamp. And when I'm thinking about iCryo, I think of the I as related to technology. And I look at the I as being related to something that uh, has been studied, that has research behind it with proven results, which is what you have. So I think it really encompasses the entire flavor of what you were trying to get across. So before we go today, there's gonna to be some people watching this and I know you're a very positive person and you live your life like that. I see over your left shoulder, you've got a picture. It looks like that possibly might, there's a little dog there and possibly yep. a picture of a family. Yeah, um, my, uh, my, my wife and my, uh, my fur baby son. <laughs> All right. Got it. Got it. So there's going to be people watching this. And what I'd like to do is something a little bit different. And I know I haven't prepared this for you, but I think you're the type of person that could sort of on the fly, put this together for me. There's going to be people um, watching this that, you know, have just gotten hit with the COVID-19 thing and, you know, some other things going on around the world and in the United States. And they're a little sort of maybe, apprehensive about taking an action step and, and they, they love what they're hearing. They want to take that first step, but maybe they're just sitting on the fence just for a moment. So I want you to, you know, in your famous Kyle way, sort of talk right into the camera to those people and tell them, you know, give them a little motivation on why they should take an action step. Well, I tell you for me, uh, growing up as, as a, especially being a millennial, uh, it's very tough because the uh, majority of the people I had to deal with in, in my age group are very tough to deal with. Um, but I always explain to people, you know, number one, things don't, don't get done unless you take action. Um, you can take as many notes as you want to day after day after day until you put things on paper and you take action in real life. The things that you're dreaming and fantasizing about won't happen. Um, so for me, that's what I did at a young age. Uh, 24 years old, you know, thinking about the iCryo brand and launching the first location at 25. Um, it's very scary for some people to start a small business. It's very scary uh, to go out on a limb and do something yourself and, and not work for somebody else and have that comfort. Um, small business owners, they understand what I'm speaking about. But what I can tell you is we chose franchising for one specific reason. Um, I wanted to know that going into this business model for anybody that's looking they would have more of a success rate if they didn't do it on their own, right? So for me, if you look at the data behind franchising, uh, I think it's 84% of people that choose franchising over doing a small business by yourself are actually more successful. Um, so for me, it was a very, uh, uh, a very deep rooted feeling that I wanted to, to express what I could do for the wellness space and bringing bits and pieces of people in the franchise community and involving them on our corporate staff to make sure that we had a solid business model for that entrepreneur that's looking at this video right now wanting to have a successful business. Um, I've been through the growing pains for eight years doing cryotherapy and, and we are where we're at because we've made 
all the mistakes we did. I always tell people we failed our way to the top. I love um, it. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of a quote that I've, I've lived the business by, but we've gone through all those struggles. We've spent all the money on due diligence and we've made all the mistakes so that you, the buyer, can come in and have a very successful high cry location. This is this is absolutely awesome. So we have to let people know how to contact you. I'm not sure what the best way is, but a lot of people watching this, they're going to want to get through to you quickly. So what's the best way to get to your corporate office to contact you or your team so we can start talking about what it takes to take that next action step? So I used to give out my phone number. <laughs> and, and then it just got real crazy. Uh, my phone just blew up, I think, every 30 minutes of the day. So we actually, uh, our president of sales, Bob Morgan, uh, he's been in franchising for over 40 years, uh, been on the corporate board for a lot of massive companies that you probably know about today. Um, he is a, he's in charge of funneling all our leads, vetting all our leads. If you just go to iCrowd.com, click on the franchise tab at the top right, as soon as you submit something, it goes directly to Bob's phone. Um, he calls you guys within the same day. Uh, he's just an amazing communicator, amazing responder, um, and he just he has the eye cryo run through his veins. And so he, he's able to, to relate to people in a way that if they were talking directly to me. See, that's awesome. And that, again, is, is, is how you build an amazing business for the entrepreneurs watching today is you have to replicate yourself. And you have to find passionate people that will be able to learn from what you do and, and emulate your same passion, your same knowledge, and your same commitment to your customers and potential customers. And you've been able to do a wonderful job on that, Kyle. And I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Again, it's been hard to get you on, but I finally got you and we were able to ask some of those questions that were just burning in the back of my mind for a long time. So, Kyle, thanks so much and congratulations on your success. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.